next, the uncertain futures of animals from the former Soviet Union as the Balance of Nature series begins. Then giant planes take to the skies on wings. Tomorrow, animals survive in frozen worlds on the living planet. Coming up. The following program is part of the Discovery Signature Series. Presenting an average day in the life of an average American family. They learned how to surf, walk, and talk all at the same time. I've ridden the fastest and the biggest waves ever ridden, and not many dads can say that. I always tell the boys to drive safely, because pavement's a harder go down than water. The water's flying over your head, and it's sparkling, and diamonds are flying. We're a family, but we haven't exactly settled down. The Iron Curtain has finally lifted. For the first time in 70 years, we are learning what effect the Cold War has had on the land and the animals of the former Soviet Union. The land is suffering from an environmental crisis, and in the confusion of each republic's search for independence, few have noticed that one of the world's last surviving species of mink is on the verge of extinction. And perhaps even fewer understand that this dissolving link in the chain of life forebodes an even greater disaster. Not long ago, this forest on the southern shore of the Baltic Sea was part of the Soviet Union. Now it belongs to the Republic of Estonia, one of the breakaway republics that also includes Latvia and Lithuania. As the republic struggle to define their independence, life in the forest goes on. But the stillness of the forest is deceiving. Beneath the veneer of calm, the struggle for survival continues. These wild European boars that live in the Esna forest west of St. Petersburg join a temporary truce with their competitors. Individually, none has the strength to break through the hard crust of snow that covers its fruit. For the moment, survival depends upon a collective effort. The wild boars instinctively understand the need to cooperate. And although their truce is uneasy, it ensures their survival through the winter. Until recently, the Soviet Union was made up of 15 republics united under the banner of Marxism. Now that the experiment has failed, the empire has fractured into 15 separate pieces. Like the Boers, the republics understand the need to cooperate. But as each republic scrambles to find its identity in the new world order, its attention has shifted away from the environment to economic survival. The European mink now stands on the edge of extinction because of a half century of politics that put industrial development and the exploitation of natural resources above care for the environment. The European mink belongs to the family of mustelids which include polecats, weasels and ermine. There are only two species of mink, the native European mink and its cousin, the American mink, highly prized and bred for its superior fur. The American mink is native to the United States and Canada. By the late 1800s, trappers had hunted the American mink into near extinction. 
In order to protect the future of their industry, hunters bred captive mink, which became the start of the fur farming industry. After World War II, Russian scientists came up with a plan to improve the quality of their own free-range fur. They released 20,000 American mink in the wilds of the Soviet Union and hoped the American mink would coexist with the European mink. But the experiment turned into a disaster. The blue area on this map of the former Soviet Union shows the range of the native European mink as it was 20 years ago. The yellow spots show the areas where the Russians settled the 20,000 American mink, 5,000 of them in the range of the European mink. The American mink adapted to their new habitat so quickly that they soon started to overrun the territory of the European mink. Suddenly, for reasons no one could explain, the European mink began to disappear. <laughs> Forty years after the Russians introduced the American mink, naturalists have begun to understand why the European mink is disappearing. Today, only a few pockets of native mink survive. It may be too late to save the species. It's not too late, however, to learn the lessons nature is so desperately trying to teach us. The Estonian forest near Esna is also the home of the European polecat, a member of the same family as the mink. The polecat, the wild ancestor of the domesticated ferret, was once common throughout Europe. Now it's extinct in places like England because farmers and gamekeepers killed them as pests. Polecats are a more resilient species than mink. Even though they've been persecuted for centuries, they've learned to tolerate man and still live and hunt in the meadows and fields near farms. Before the introduction of the common house cat in the ninth century, farmers relied on pole cats to rid their farms of rodents. Far from being pests, mink and pole cats helped to control infestations of mice, rats, and rabbits. But farmers refused to tolerate their raids on pigeon coops and hen houses and continued to hunt them. The polecat is among the smallest of all carnivores, but unlike most of the other members of its order, it can kill prey several times larger than itself, such as a rabbit. But a polecat will eat almost anything it can catch, most often rodents. Polecats live alone. Each animal stakes out a territory that can range anywhere from 250 to 6,000 acres, depending upon the availability of food. Only during the mating season will a male abandon the territory is defended so carefully all year. In a day, it may walk as far as 10 kilometers in search of a mate. This male has entered a female's territory. He approaches her burrow carefully, uncertain how she'll receive him. A female is in heat from three to five days only, and if he miscalculates his invitation, she'll drive him away. At first, she taunts him, but the scent that has attracted him is unmistakable, and soon she accepts him into her burrow. Six weeks later, the female gives birth to seven blind and deaf kits. A newborn weighs less than half an ounce, roughly the same weight as a quarter. With very little hair to maintain their own body heat, the kits rely on the warmth of the nest and their mother to stay alive. The kits will grow so quickly that even though they won't be able to hear or see for a month, the kits will be ready to leave the nest in search of their own territories in 12 weeks. 
In the meantime, they have to rely on their mother for milk, warmth, and protection against predators. As a species, the polecat has been flexible enough to handle the changing forces of nature. Until now, its niche in the scheme of life in the Estonian forest has been secure. The only force with which the polecat can't contend is the hand of man. The polecat can't continue to withstand man's constant intolerance and superstition. These animals aren't the sneaky marauders of the night we've imagined them to be. Like the mink, polecats play an important part in the ecological balance of life in Estonia and Russia. In the past, the fate of the polecat depended upon the presence of prey. Now, its fate depends more upon the presence of man. An ecosystem is made up of infinite detail. It's difficult, if not impossible, to predict what will affect this complex web of relationships. The tapestry of animal and plant life is interwoven with a million threads. And if one thread should unravel, then it can threaten the entire tapestry. So far, the polecat has found ways to adapt to man. Fortunately for the polecat, its pelt isn't a badge of wealth or rank. Unfortunately, the mink hasn't fared as well. The hand of man has already taken a deadly toll. Stay tuned for more of Balance of Nature on the Discovery Channel. Go behind the headlines to the heart of Islam for answers. Beirut to Bosnia. A three-part Discovery Journal special beginning Wednesday at 10 Eastern, 9 Central. Contains violent material. Parental discretion is advised. Monroe Sensitrack. Road sensing shocks and struts. Designed to give you extra control during a swerve. Extra control over rough roads. Monroe Sensitrack gives you both extra control and ride comfort automatically. Monroe Sense Attract, like two shocks in one. Call 1 800 Strut now for a Monroe Sense Attract dealer near you. It all runs together. Time for our jobs, ourselves, our families. Is there something that connects us, something that transcends time and distance? Well, there's Mobile Link. Only cellular service that has mobile link makes it easy to stay connected almost everywhere, all the time, or just whenever. Make sure your local cellular service has mobile link. Call 800-995-4000. At Compaq, we realized that buying a computer raises a lot of questions. So we came up with the answer, Compaq Presario. Powerful computers that come preloaded with software that can correct your spelling or balance your checkbook. In fact, the Compact Presario can even answer your computing questions. Oh, and if you happen to have a phone, it can answer that too. Hi, we can't answer the computer right now. Please leave a message. The new Presario from Compact. what a BMW convertible is going for these days. The new 318i. Friday night, let the Discovery Channel take you back to nature with Wildlife Chronicles and Profiles of Nature. Friday at 8 Eastern, 7 Central, only on the Discovery Channel. Too many children in this nation are being held prisoner. Their captors are fear and violence. Their playgrounds are no place to play in. As a parent, I want this violence to stop. As your president, I'm committed to ending it. We must strengthen our families, neighborhoods, and communities. We must give our children a future. We must take away their fear and give them hope. Do something now. Call 1-800-WE-PREVENT. We must give our children back their childhood. Working together, we can. Comedy. Horror. 
romance. You can watch it and you can read it on cable. You mean with captions, right? Of course. 100 million people benefit from captions. With the service of the National Captioning Institute, you've got words on the screen. Cable captions. Cable cares. The last stand of the European mink now continues on Balance of Nature. The popularity of mink as a fur soared in the 20th century. By 1960, mink accounted for three quarters of the world's fur trade. The industry was consuming 25 million mink a year to supply a largely American public that wanted mink coats as a symbol of wealth and status. The Soviet Union recognized the economical value of American mink and imported them to start their own fur farms. By 1970, a quarter of the world's supply of mink came from the USSR. Russian zoologists released thousands of American mink in the wilds of Siberia so they would interbreed with the native mink and create a superior free-range pelt. By introducing an alien species into the ecosystem, Russian scientists played a wild card that permanently changed the balance of nature. What the zoologists didn't know was that American minks become sexually active a month before European males. By the time European minks start their search for mates, American males have already fertilized the females of both species. That should have been good news, but what happened was a catastrophe. The two species of mink turned out to be genetically incompatible. The fetuses couldn't develop past a certain stage and died inside their mothers. Some European males still manage to find females that haven't been impregnated by American males. This mink has found the den of a female beneath the root tangle of a fallen tree. She taunts him, refusing to let him enter. He challenges her, but she rebuffs him and he storms off, planning a new strategy. He marks her territory to warn off other potential suitors as if performing his protocols will guarantee him success. Then he returns to her den for another try. This time he tries a different approach. He coos and dances for her. The female watches him passively, but eventually, when the time is right, she'll accept him as her mate. to a rich variety of life, all of which depends upon the quality of water for survival. If anything affects the water, then in turn, it affects everything in the food chain. The European mink spends its life on or near water. It feeds on everything from frogs and fish to larger prey, such as the water vole. Its den will rarely be more than a few meters away from a stream or river. But the clear running water that is so essential to the survival of the local ecology in this forest preserve is already tinged with pollutants from factories and industries upstream. And clear cutting of forests, even though miles away, has affected the water level. Increased runoff has raised some streams, flooding the dens of the mink and their prey, while other, smaller streams have dried up completely. As the streams die, so do the animals that depend upon them. As the water quality worsens, the mink abandon their territories in search of clean water. But it's becoming too difficult for them to find proper living conditions. Oftentimes, an animal will be flexible enough to seek alternative food sources when it can't find its normal prey. But the European mink resists change. It accepts only the conditions nature, not man, has created. As clean water becomes harder to find, so it becomes harder to find the European mink. For those who can hear the alarm, the disappearing mink warns man of the invisible but nonetheless deadly changes taking place in the environment. But few can hear this cry over the clamor of people newly freed from the yoke of communism. Estonia, like each of the other republics that once made up the Soviet Empire, 
has had to cope with the difficult and often painful process of converting from 50 years of socialism to a free market economy. This total reorganization of thinking and leadership has pushed many urgent ecological issues out of the mainstream of concern. Meanwhile, the mink struggle for survival continues. Instead, they prefer to appropriate the dens of other animals in root tangles, in riverbanks, or in any safe place convenient to water. This pregnant female has chosen to make her nest in the hollow of a tree, barely a meter away from a stream that is still teeming with life. Such streams are becoming increasingly hard to find. Over the past 40 years, Estonia has drained over half its wetlands for the sake of developing industry and agriculture. Hydroelectric projects have permanently altered major watersheds. They have not only changed the face of the land at the development sites, but throughout the complex network of rivers and streams that are the home of the mink. Oblivious to the threat that confronts her species, this mother-to-be lines her nest with moss, dry grass, and leaves collected from the forest floor. She will give birth to anywhere from four to seven kits that will stay with her about eight months, when they'll be old enough to strike out on their own. Until then, they will live in this crowded nest under the watchful eye of their mother, who must teach them everything she knows about survival. For centuries, these skills have been enough to ensure the survival of her species. But sadly, what she knows is now no longer enough. She will be giving birth to a shrinking generation, one that will find coping with the problems of survival increasingly difficult. But this moment is one of hope and expectation. In spite of the odds stacking up against her, it is still a moment of victory the advent of the next generation of European mink. The last stand of the European mink will be back in a moment. Four, four, one. No, no, that's not it. Four, five, one. No, that's that stupid screen pass. I can't remember the number. I better call an audible. <clears throat> Call Candace. So, Steve, you got the tickets? Okay, Candace, here's the deal. I got five on the 40 for the 14th, three on the 15th. He's 50 so the 30th, good with six numbers. On the 40 for the 14th again. Call now for the revolutionary voice activated phone card. Only from Sprint. This is Horseshoe Bay, Bermuda, and I work here at the Lost and Found. People come here to get away to forget. And they do. People are in such good spirits and good moods, they lose things all the time. Golf clubs and the wallets. Most of these things are lost by people on vacation. <laughs> Maybe it's the Bermuda Triangle. <laughs> I mean, this place was discovered by people who were lost. American Express Traveler's Checks. Don't leave home without them. Some fear the passage of time. Others welcome it because it will reveal their strengths. Now, J.D. Power & Associates reveals that the best overall car line in vehicle dependability at five years of ownership no longer comes from Germany or Japan. The leader is Cadillac, creating a higher standard as time goes by. Does it feel like things are too much to handle, like your life is just a lot of pain? Call the Boys Town National Hotline. They've helped hundreds of thousands of kids and parents. They know what to do to help you. Call toll-free, 1-800-448-3000. For decades, we have talked about it over dinner, read about it in the papers, watched it on TV. Why? Now, go behind the headlines, into the heart of Islam for answers. Award-winning journalist Robert Fisk documents a legacy of lies and betrayal in the Middle East. Beirut to Bosnia, a three-part Discovery Journal special, beginning Wednesday at 10 Eastern, 9 Central. 
contains violent material. Parental discretion is advised. The last stand of the European mink now continues on Balance of Nature. have passed since this female mated with a roving male and the time has come for her to deliver her kits she nervously patrols the area around her den as she checks final details these last few weeks have been difficult for her at a time when she needs a steady food supply to nurture her fetuses her reflexes have slowed down making hunting much more difficult She's had to rely on insects, frogs, birds, and even carrion when nothing else was available. But now, all that has come to an end. Satisfied all is well, she returns to her den. A few hours later, she's given birth to a brood of six kits. They're born deaf and blind and barely have enough strength to lift their heads. The nursing kits demand milk, and so the mother must leave the den in order to continue her hunt for food. She returns to the stream that has provided her so well in the past. Although she hasn't fully regained her strength and speed yet, she'll start hunting rodents again. Luck is with her, and she quickly finds a muskrat. But prey is becoming harder to find. An adult mink may kill as many as five muskrats or water voles a day. As its prey thins out, the mink pushes out the boundaries of its territory in order to find a stable supply of food. But there is a limit to how much territory she can cover. And the mink faces the harsh law of diminishing returns. For when the energy expended is greater than the energy returned, then no animal can survive. This struggle for life includes both mink and muskrat, and whoever wins the moment may soon follow as the next victim. The kits are 10 days old now. Their coats have thickened and started to darken. The white hair around the mouth, characteristic of the European mink, is more evident. Their eyes still won't open for another three weeks. Oblivious to the world, they rely on their mother for constant warmth and milk. Their mother has fully regained her strength and speed again. She has had to carefully balance the time she spends in the nest attending the needs of her young and out of the nest hunting. But as her kits get older, she spends more time away from the nest. Once her kits are weaned at 12 weeks, she will bring food into the nest. But until then, she hunts only for herself so she can make the milk her sucklings demand. She will host her kits only until autumn when they will be old enough to care for themselves. Until then, she'll be their sole provider, feeding them, protecting them against predators such as wolves, foxes, and eagles, and teaching them the skills they need to survive. But the world around her is changing too fast. She can teach her young how to hunt, but she doesn't know how to teach them to avoid the trapper's snare. She can teach her young how to swim, but she can't teach them how to survive in contaminated water. She doesn't know how to teach her young how to live in an increasingly unstable world. 
This scene, which has taken place millions of times in the past, seems to have little prospect for the future. As countries such as Estonia and Russia pursue their individual visions of the future, they may do so at the cost of their irreplaceable natural resources. And once the land has been stripped and poisoned, little may be left for the future. Not far from the nest of mink, the family of polecats has matured. The weaned kits are nearly the size of their mother and they've begun to eat fresh meat. But their mother is finding it more and more difficult to keep up with the demands of her growing kits' appetites. The kits are restless after so many weeks of close confinement and are ready to experience the world outside. The prospects for the future of the polecat are much better than the minks because the polecat has found ways to adapt to the encroachment of civilization. Since it doesn't stake itself so closely to water as the mink, the polecat is free to explore any new territory that offers it food and shelter. While the mink shuns man, the bolder polecat has learned how to take advantage of the bonanza of opportunities presented by farmers and homeowners. They make night raids on rabbit warrens and chicken houses and scout the silos and grain bins for the mice and rats that feed there. But for now, the kids still prefer the security of their crowded den to the unknown that awaits them outside. Finally, the mother decides to evict her brood. But the task is more difficult than it seems. One by one, she hauls out her reluctant kits. Once the kids get used to the strange new world outside their den, she takes them on their first tour of the neighborhood. Everything they see is new and frightening. Still believing in the security of numbers, the tentative kits huddle together for reassurance. Gradually, they feel braver and begin to venture out independently. Lured by the magic of discovery, they can't resist the temptation to explore everything the world has to offer. Each new experience is a lesson, and as the kids become comfortable with their environment, they will know its pitfalls and dangers. They will understand instinctively how to fit into the scheme of life and what is expected of them. For now, however, they're still a family, and there is time to play under the close supervision of their mother. Kits practice hunting skills on each other. Their play sharpens their instincts and prepares them for the adult world of carnivores. Soon they'll be ready to play in the larger than life theater of nature. Cats hunt after dusk and until dawn, but the mother prefers to train her kits during the day. Here, two of the kits accidentally flush a water wolf. It is their first encounter with live prey. Instinct takes over, 
and the kits begin to prove they are both worthy and ready to fend for themselves. The lives of polecats and rodents are integrated, and their fates depend upon each other. This balance is the result of countless generations of evolution. This moment is no more or less cruel than the one that precedes or follows it. This is part of a perfect moral order, whose details have been refined over thousands of years. Here, life is based purely on necessity. Survival changes the coloration of its clothing seasonally, and in the normal cycle of life, it continues generation upon generation. Stay tuned for more of Balance of Nature on the Discovery Channel. Explore your world. You have to look for that idea that excites you. For example, I started thinking, let's make food be fresher, as fresh as it used to be when I was a kid. What we're working on will allow food processors to track the food as it moves along. Such a machine is in our future. DuPont allows its people the freedom to go after hunches. The idea simmers, the idea percolates fresh food. There's nothing artificial about a moment of inspiration. If you were able to take in this beautiful Texas beach from a French hotel, if it were possible to view this Texas monument from a double-decker bus, if somehow you could see these Texas dancers from a Spanish veranda, then you'd know why we say Texas is like a whole other country. If you could look out at these lush Texas vineyards through Italian arches, if there were a way to see these rugged Texas mountains from an Australian train, if this Texas forest could be seen from Germany's Autobahn, then you'd know why we say Texas is like a whole other country. At J.C. Penney, saving money is the name of a game. Especially during our baby day sale. In no time, you'll be racking up 15 to 30% off on name brand clothing. From cradle to kinder, every parent needs a break. Like the J.C. Penney baby day sale. After all, raising kids isn't all fun and games. J.C. Penney. <laughs> The Cadillac Seville SLS, with its 270 horsepower North Star V8, it passes by everything. And now, for a limited time, Seville SLS also lets you pass by monthly payments. For a single upfront payment of $12,405, you're in command for 24 months. And by making all your payments in advance, you save $1,771. The Cadillac Seville SLS, with Smart Lease Plus, it's hard to pass up. Cadillac Seville SLS, creating a higher standard. Make your money work harder than ever. Call now for your free Wall Street Journal guide to understanding money and investing. It focuses on financial markets so you can make informed choices. Call now to get your guide free. 
when you subscribe to the wall street journal where you'll find information you need to get ahead get 10 weeks of the journal for just 36 dollars and the guide to understanding money and investing free with your paid subscription call toll free 800-752-6300 that's 800-752-6300 Friday night, let the Discovery Channel take you back to nature. First, explore the majestic grace and raw natural power of the animal kingdom on Wildlife Chronicles. Then, photographers journey around the world in search of nature's most beautiful and amazing creatures on Profiles of Nature. Wildlife Chronicles and Profiles of Nature, Friday at 8 Eastern, 7 Central, only on the Discovery Channel. Every April in Washington, one new idea is named Invention of the Year. Recently, it was the invention that's made room-filling stereo sound finally this easy to live with. From America's most respected name in stereo, a new concept, lifelike stereo sound, smaller, smarter, and more affordable than ever before. The Wave Radio, from Bose. To learn all about this new kind of radio, call now and find out why the San Francisco Chronicle insists it must be heard to be believed. The Chicago Tribune says Dr. Bose might checks in the mail. And Popular Science named the Wave Radio best of what's new. If you love music or magic, call now. The last stand of the European mink now continues on Balance of Nature. This ermine is in its summer chestnut coat. A close relative of the mink, ermine are hunted primarily in the winter when their coats turn snowy white. Unfortunately for ermine, their skins have long been favored by British justices and peers. In 1937, at a time when the exploitation of mustelids was regulated only by an insatiable market, Canada sent 50,000 ermine pelts to England for the coronation of King George VI. Time hasn't been entirely unkind to the ermine. It takes over 300 pelts to make a coat, and for no other reason than the price of labor, demand for ermine has fallen off. In spite of heavy trapping, ermine have adapted more readily to the onslaught of human progress, and although they survive in relatively small numbers, they aren't threatened as a species. Ermine are unique not only for their fur, but because they exhibit unique behavior. This female ermine has also given birth to a clutch of kits, and she's on the hunt in order to feed them. However, the ermine has a trait which it doesn't share with the polecat or the mink. After making her kill, she celebrates her triumph as a hunter with an elaborate frolicsome dance that seems to be an expression of pure joy.
by the strong scent of the kits, a male ermine has found her nest. This male isn't the father, but the resident male in her territory. In one of nature's oddities, never before filmed, Estonian cinematographer Rain Marin captured this male inseminating 10-day-old blind nestlings. pregnant, the fertilized eggs will not implant in the uterus until the next spring. The eggs will actually remain in a state of suspended animation for over 10 months. Even more remarkably, in what's called a suckling pregnancy, females can actually reproduce at the tender age of five weeks before they're even weaned from their mother. intentioned, man has interfered with nature's integrity and left it out of phase. Trappers hunt mink, polecats, and weasel for their fur, and farmers, who regard them as pests for their occasional raids on hen houses and pigeon coops, ignore the ban on killing protected species. fact is, rodents cause far more damage to the local and national food stores in the former Soviet Union than any other single cause. Before the introduction of the domestic cat, farmers relied on weasels to control infestations of mice and rats in their grain bins. farmer would put out a dish of milk to attract them. They were good at earning their keep. destruction of their native habitat, unmonitored poaching and trapping, and short-sighted experiments such as the Russian mink release program have had a profound impact on the native species from Siberia in the west to the deserts of Kazakhstan and Kyrgyzia in the south to the Baltic Sea to the north. The Siberian weasel, also known as the Kolinsky, 
has been more successful at adapting to the intrusions of man, although it is frequently hunted for its fur. The marbled polecat, which lives in the deserts of Central Asia, is among the rarest of animals in the former Soviet Union. So little is known about them that no one knows how many still survive. The Turkestan polecat is also in trouble. A native of Russian Central Asia, very little is known about them and how many are left. But all these animals, and many more like them, have fallen victim to some degree to man's intolerance, superstition, and greed. It's late summer now, and the mink kits are almost fully grown. They've lost their initial shyness and now feel at home in their environment. Clumsiness has given way to agility, hesitancy to confidence. Their games become increasingly more serious and soon the family will break apart, each kit leading its own solitary life. They will travel long distances to find a territory to claim and settle. But water pollution and hydroelectric developments jeopardize their habitat. Every year it gets harder for the mink to find the pristine environment it needs in order to survive as the human world of progress closes in on it. By spring, the female kits will be old enough to bear young, but only if European males can find them before the American males do. But for these golden moments in late summer, the kids still enjoy the prerogatives of childhood. The hand of man is rarely gentle when it touches the fragile ecological balance created by time and nature. One thoughtless touch can have devastating results, reverberating through nature with the destructive power of an avalanche threatening or even extinguishing an entire species of animal. Today, a quarter of the world's mammals are in jeopardy. Every year, the planet loses between 40 and 50 species of mammals and birds, and the European mink seems destined to become one more. If we let nature take its course, the European mink is doomed to extinction. It has disappeared so quickly from the woodlands and coasts of Europe and the former Soviet Union that the species already appears on the World Conservation Union's endangered species list. In order for the European mink to survive, zoologists will have to take it into captivity. They will have to start aggressive breeding programs in zoos and farms and bring up the numbers of mink and then settle them in colonies where they'll be safe from incursions by both the American mink and man. This means isolating them on islands and remote preserves. In 1981, Russian scientists from the Siberian city of Novosibirsk took 25 European mink and released them on the islands of Kunashir in the Kuril Islands north of Japan. So far, the mink have adapted well to their new home. With the dissolution of a centrally controlled Soviet Union and the rise of individually controlled republics, it may be years before each republic addresses the crisis of the mink. By that time, it may be too late, and the European mink will exist only in a few isolated pockets. Nature isn't a casual collection of creatures. Each animal has its own niche in the larger scheme of things. 
The loss of the European mink contributes to the decline of the completeness and vitality of the system of life. A token population on the remote Kuril Islands isn't enough to maintain the viability of the species. For now, and perhaps permanently, it has lost its place in the natural order of things. Mercifully, these kids can't understand the bleak prospects for their survival. For now, they are in the joyous summer of childhood, oblivious to care. Carnivores such as the mink are near the tip of the food chain. A decline in their population warns of trouble in the whole system. They warn of pollution in the watershed by fertilizers and pesticides, and they warn about the effects of the elimination of their habitat. If we continue to be careless about our natural resources, the variety of life will continue to dwindle, and the European mink will become yet another statistic in a growing list of casualties. More importantly, the crisis of the mink is a crisis of the land itself, because to lose one means ultimately to lose the other. Even those mink which are protected on reserves are in peril. We think of reserves as safe havens, free from the influence of the outside world, but all animals in all places on the planet are affected by what we do. There are no more truly safe havens. As the world's population doubles in the next 40 years, even the remotest reserve will feel its effects. Until we take an active concern for the well-being of animals such as the European mink, then its fate depends upon the whim of civilization. The European mink may be in its twilight. Its passing would diminish nature as it would diminish us as a part of nature. Its lesson can serve only to remind us how fragile our world really is. Something's missing from your sandwich. The great taste of cheese. This turkey sandwich is as plain as it can be. But add some zesty cheese. It's such a hit, they'll vote it MVP. Love it with cheese. Give your sandwich a new attitude with cheese. For decades, we have talked about it over dinner. Read about it in the papers. Watched it on TV. Why? Now, go behind the headlines, into the heart of Islam for answers. Award-winning journalist Robert Fisk documents a legacy of lies and betrayal in the Middle East. Beirut to Bosnia, a three-part Discovery Journal special, beginning Wednesday at 10 Eastern, 9 Central. Contains violent material. Parental discretion is advised. <laughs> Friday night, let the Discovery Channel take you back to nature. First, Explore the majestic grace and raw natural power of the animal kingdom on Wildlife Chronicles. Then, photographers journey around the world in search of nature's most beautiful and amazing creatures on Profiles of Nature. Wildlife Chronicles and Profiles of Nature, Friday at 8 Eastern, 7 Central, only on the Discovery Channel.